Hello everyone, my name is Virginie Goubert and I will give you today an introduction to some optimization steps and guidelines you need uh, to put in place your multiplexing assay using the OPAL technology. As, as you might know already, OPAL is a way to look at several biomarkers, today up to eight biomarkers, on a single tissue section while retaining a morphological context. So it's a way to look at, for example, the tumor microenvironment and the immune systems, the immune system around the tumor um, and quantify signal um, in case you want to score different checkpoints or biomarkers. Um, we have now a lot of uh, recommendations and guidelines and tips to multiplex in the best and easiest way as possible. And as you know, uh, you don't have to worry with Opal about the species of your primary because you can uh, work with different primary antibodies made in the same species. So to is the process of um, developing your seven and nine color assay. We provide OPAL detection kits, and those kits contain everything you need to perform your assay. So we have chosen the best combination of dyes and also solution uh, such as the secondary antibody, um, which is a mixture of anti-mouse and anti-rabbit IgG, except for the new mouse kit, where it's just anti-rabbit uh, antibody, and also all the solutions in terms of blocking solution, antibody diluent, amplification solution, and so on. So you don't have to worry about making your own buffer. So OPAL is a repetition of a sequential staining cycles, and every, um, every cycle includes a blocking step, a primary antibody incubation, which is usually just 30 minutes, um, a secondary antibody introdu in introduction with um, conjugation to HRP. HRP will make the deposition of OPAL in just 10 minutes, and then we strip the antibodies and we uh, start a new staining cycle. So the staining cycles are every time quite short, which enables you to do several staining cycles in one day. But um, as uh, it could be a long process manually, we now have also a way to fully automate OPAL using the Leica band and using the Roche Discovery Ultra. And now, for example, with the Leica band, you can do your seven color assay in 12 hours. So you can do it overnight and also with uh, better reproducibility because we have looked internally um, and um, I mean, doing some reproducibility and validation tests. And we usually have a CV below 15% between one and be between racks. So today I will cover in, I hope, a quite short uh, video, um, the monoplex optimizations before moving on to your multiplexing and um, looking at um, balancing your signals and so on to have, um, to have a very reliable uh, multiplex assay. So the first thing which is quite important is to prepare your slides carefully. Um, so we recommend to bake slides in the oven at 55 or 60 degrees overnight before performing the xylene and ethanol um, gradient path to completely deparaffinize um, your tissue sections. For those working manually and using the microwave and having delicate uh, tissue sections, you could use 10% uh, neutral buffered formalin for 10 minutes uh, to fix the tissue section onto the glass slides. That would really help to maintain the tissue section onto the slide over those several staining, staining cycles. So the first uh, 
uh, step when you start uh, with, a, with a new panel and with new antibodies is first to validate uh, each antibody. And we like to do a short titration. So we, if you have validated your antibody already using DAB, so standard IHC, we highly encourage you to use the same DAB concentration, I mean the same primary antibody concentration as you use uh, for DAB. But in case you want to dilute your antibody a bit further, you can do a two-time or four-time dilution. You can also try pH 6 versus pH 9, although most antibodies work really well, usually with pH 6 or after several antigen retrieval steps. A really good thing using INFORM and looking at your opal staining is you can now reproduce, you can mimic a DAB staining um, from your fluorescent uh, tissue section, for, for, from your fluorescent image. So as you can see here, if I look, for example, at the Opal 520 um, uh, in a uh, fluorescent, I can reproduce a DAB staining where the DAP would be like hematoxylin and the Opal 520 is represented as DAB staining. We call it a pathology view, and this way you can really compare what you have using OPAL with what you get, um, what you used to have using DAB. So first, what I look is, um, I look at the staining pattern. I want to make sure I get a very nice staining pattern. So for example, here with CD8, we know it's a membrane staining, and I want to make sure I have a nice ring and that all the antigens are well saturated. If it becomes spotty or patchy, I know I went too far into the dilution and I need to concentrate a bit more. And vice versa, if I see it's really chunky or if I have really high signal, I know I have some room for dilution. With INFORM and multispectral imaging, you can now really quantify your signal and um, and subtract autofluorescence. So now you can have a really good idea of your signal to background, and we recommend to have a signal to background of at least 10. So you can look by going hover, um, by hovering onto the image, um, you, can, you can look at signal, and you can just look at signal, specific signal versus background, and make sure you get the best uh, signal to background as possible. So um, if you're still unsatisfied after this titration with the staining pattern, maybe um, you need to try different antigen retrieval method or maybe try longer incubation time of your primary. So I recommend to start with 30 minutes, but if you need to go up to an hour, even maybe overnight, feel free to do so. Although I believe overnight incubation just brings more background and is often not necessary. Um, in terms of blocking solution, as I say, we provide um, we provide blocking solution in our kit. But feel free to use other blocking solutions if you want to reduce the background or if you feel uh, you have non-specific staining. And of course, if you're still not happy, feel free to try another primary antibody. Um, today, we have many providers and clones available, so you can, you're flexible in that way. Okay, do your controls. I always repeat that, uh, but it's quite crucial when you start uh, with new antibodies and with a new stripping, um, with a, a new stripping metho method, to make sure that your stripping is complete. And we have two approaches for that. So. The first one is to do a full staining cycle using, for example, OPAL 520. Then you strip your antibody using uh, your preferred stripping method. And you come again with just a secondary and another dye. So let's say OPAL 620. And if the stripping isn't complete, you would see some leftover of signal, like you can see on the image on the right, you see some of the other dye colocalized with the first one. That means the stripping was not complete and the secondary is buying to some leftover of the primary. 
Um, Another way to do is uh, if, for example, you're looking like here at CD8, a membrane marker, then you can perform a second, a second staining cycle after stripping using a nuclear marker. If the stripping is complete, you shouldn't see any co-localization between the membrane marker and the nuclear marker. Um, I know that in our all application guides, you, we highly recommend microwave, um, but feel free to use any stripping methods you have in your lab, such as water bath. So for example, for water bath, you can use 95 degrees for 20 minutes or 98 degrees if the stripping is not enough. You can use um, different kinds of microwaves, uh, pressure cooker, and also we have some users using DACO-PT link uh, in order to perform heat treatment uh, for, for on the slides for the stripping. And of course, we also use the Leica band and Ventana Discovery Ultra. So um, again, doing your control um, is crucial, especially if you want to publish. Um, so it's quite important to do a no primary antibody control and also an isotype control. So um, once you have, when, once you're satisfied uh, with what, what you get uh, in terms of staining pattern and uh, signal intensity, um, it's quite important to define the order of addition. And the best method I found uh, to look at how your antigen is going to react to several heating steps is using three serial sections. One section that I would stain um, after one, stain, one heating, heating treatment, one serial section that I would stain after three heating steps, and one that I would stain after six um, heat uh, treatments. Um, every time between every heat treatment, I let it cool down, I wash, I use a fresh uh, antigen retrieval solution again um, before repeating the heat treatment. And this way you can really see how your, um, how your, your, your epitope is going to react to the several retrievals. We have found that about 70, even more 80 percent of antibodies are actually giving a better staining pattern and signal after several heating steps. So we believe heating, um, the, the sequential heating steps are not affecting the tissue, but it's, it's, it's true that for a few, maybe 10% uh, epitopes, we, see, we could see a decrease in signal um, like if the epitope was degraded. So in that case, uh, you know that this antibody has to be placed first in the sequence. Um, and if you have an increase in staining pattern, an increase in signal, you know that this one could be placed at the end. So I really like doing this experiment. It takes one day, but it will really give you a lot of good information about where to place your primary antibody in the sequence. The good thing with opal is that you don't have to worry about um, the opal dye stability. We have found um, that the, the, whatever the dyes, they are quite stable throughout the whole uh, the whole st staining procedure. So, so even if you do uh, one, three, or six stripping steps the signal will stay stable across those uh, six staining cycles. So you don't have to worry about which one to put first. The only thing that you can um, pay attention to is uh, how you would pair your opal dyes to your, to your uh, markers. So we have um, assessed on the Vectra Polaris, uh, but also on the Vectra 3, um, the di difference in intensity of our different dyes. So per the nature of the dye and also um, the spectral response of the camera, we have found that Opal 690 and Opal 780 are always the lowest, the dimmer signal. 
Um, so I would encourage you use this Opal 690 and or Opal 6, uh, 780 with the most abundant marker you have. So for example, say to keratin or CD3, something where you have usually a strong, strong signal. Also, if you're looking at colocalized markers, uh, we recommend to pick dyes that are not spectrally close. So for example, if you look at CD3 and CD8 and PD1, don't use 520, 540, and 570. You can use 520, 620, and 690. We have enough room so that you can um, separate your dyes for your colocalized markers. And once you have done those um, few optimization steps, you're now, you're now ready to do um, your multiplexing. And, um, and with uh, multispectral imaging, we like to balance our signals. Um, so when you look at inform and at your multiplexing um, experiment and multiplexed images, you can, um, you can look at signal expression and balance the signal intensity by just adjusting the opal dye uh, dilution. So it's very easy. You just have to dilute a bit more if the signal is really strong, or you have to increase the concentration a bit if uh, you want to increase the signal, but you don't have to play on the, the antibody concentration and so on again. And that's it. That's how you can have this beautiful multiplexed image. And using Inform, you can also look at every component and check again that you don't have any unspecific colloquialization and that your unmixing is perfect. So the take home message is really keep it as simple as possible and improve your staining step by step. And if you follow those steps, you will have a multiplexed assay in a very fast, uh, fast way. Thank you for your attention and talk to you soon.